Last year, we took the 2019 Jeep Wrangler on a road trip during a snowstorm from Acton Vale to Toronto, Ontario. Now this year, we're not doing a road trip and we're hoping for some snow, but we're looking at one of the newest, hottest vehicles from FCA, and that is this 2020 Jeep Gladiator Overland. It's not the Rubicon edition. That's a little bit more off-road oriented, but this is the middle trim for us here in Canada. So I'm hoping for some snow. We're gonna be seeing how this vehicle performs a little off-road as you can see here, but mostly as a pickup truck in the winter and everything you need to know about it. We're gonna be doing some winter off-road testing with the Gladiator to see if it's worth that $60,000 price point here in Canada and if it's really worth all of that hype. So why am I sitting in the Gladiator instead of going around and talking about it? Well, that answer is twofold. Number one, we did the Wrangler a little earlier. We actually did it almost a year ago. We took it to Toronto in February and realistically, I mean, the interior is pretty much Wrangler. The exterior looks a lot like it. So there's no point in me really going in depth with it. Number two is it's currently minus 15 degrees Celsius out with a wind chill of about minus 28. Yesterday was even worse. It was minus 20 with a wind chill of minus 31. So I haven't been able to do much filming, meaning I'm staying inside where it's warm. But let's talk about the Gladiator. It's a pickup truck. So the two most important numbers for somebody looking at a vehicle like this will be payload and towing. Towing on this is 6,000 pounds. Payload is about 1,100. It is light. I mean, this is a mid-sized truck. It's not a full size, something like a Ford F-150. This is a mid-sized vehicle, so it would be competing with things like the Ford Ranger instead of the bigger trucks. And that makes sense. I mean, this does feel exactly like a mid-sized truck, even though it's a lot boxier and just it's a different thing altogether. It's one of the reasons why I say that this is the coolest truck you can buy in the segment, but I'd say just in general right now, because how many vehicles can you really think of that you can take a SUV design or a crossover design and translate it into a truck and make it work? The only one that comes to mind, and I'm not saying that it was a good idea, but the H2 Hummer, that worked, right? I mean, it wasn't a great car, but you were able to take that SUV design, put a small bed on the back of it, and it worked. And then you know, the H1 Hummer is technically a pickup truck as well with the open back part there. So that kind of vehicle works, and obviously there's a lot of history because AM General is the one who actually built the military Humvee and then sold off the design to General Motors. It really should have been a Jeep, but it wasn't and it's okay. So there's not many vehicles that you can really take that design and turn it into. I mean, maybe Ford's gonna take their Mustang now, now that they've turned it into a crossover electric thing. Maybe they'll make the Mustang truck. I doubt it. This though is really cool. I've had a great time driving it so far. A lot of people are giving me thumbs ups as I'm driving around. I'm getting a lot of attention from this vehicle because you don't see a ton of them on the road yet. They certainly don't sell as many of these as the Wrangler does, but there's still a lot of good going on. And it's only a few thousand dollars more for the pickup truck over a similarly equipped Wrangler. You can add more to it. I would say that this is very well equipped. It doesn't have the advanced safety package, which means you don't have autonomous emergency forward braking, which honestly, it's fine. You do have blind spot monitoring, backup sensors, a really good high resolution backup camera. You know, one thing you can't get on this that you can on the Wrangler would be that new front facing camera that they use for rock climbing. It's not on this. Plus this is also the Overland trim. There's only three sold here in Canada four in the US, you've got the Sport S, Overland, Rubicon. And the Rubicon is the one that we actually had booked a little while ago, but uh, due to some issues, we weren't able to take it. So that's more off-road oriented. This one's more of a day-to-day -day driver. And I gotta say, I really do like it. Very similar experience to the Wrangler. And in fact, last night, I went to go see Star Wars and I took this to go to Sherbrooke. It was the closest theater I could go to. It's about, uh, yeah, I don't know, it's about an hour drive. I think it was about 80 kilometers or so and man oh man like the ride there was terrible because they do not plow the roads here but it reminded me of my trip in the wrangler back in mississauga because the roads were crap it was dark i was going on my own it reminded me a lot of that because i mean the interior is essentially the same but it also reminded me of that feeling i had of trying to get to my destination in one piece and this did a great job crosswinds it's a little tough on something like this it is boxy so I was getting pushed around quite a bit, but there's great traction on this. The tires are huge. They are winter tires, which obviously 
is the law here in Quebec, but certainly a good idea if you're buying something like this. You do have your transfer case selector here. I've had it in four high pretty much the entire time I've been driving this this week. When I picked it up, I kept it in two high just because yeah, the roads are actually pretty clear and you could get away with driving it in two wheel drive mode. But the problem with this, because it's a pickup truck, there's not as much weight on the rear wheels as there would be in the Wrangler because the wheelbase is quite a bit longer on this. It's just less weight back there, not much pushing down. So if you put about 1,100 pounds in the payload area, or if you had a trailer, maybe it'd be a little bit better. I've kept it in four high, I've had a great time. I've been doing some fun semi off-road stuff, but that's been at night because we get all the snow at night for some reason. So I can't show you guys on the video what kind of stuff we've been able to do but this thing handles it phenomenally well plus you got that cool factor that comes along with it but let's talk about the bed for a minute this comes with a rolling tonneau cover it's a nice little thing it clips into the back very secure to the back end you know closest part to the cab portion of the truck and then you roll it out covers the top and then it locks in about a foot from the tailgate and then that allows you to be able to pop it open and they say jeep says that it's like a weekend warrior mode where you can put two by fours in it be able to just flip that top portion up leave the tailgate up and use this on the weekend to go to home depot and build a house that's not going to be used all the time right? i don't know why they're advertising it like that it's such a weird thing but it does work so you just flip that portion up so you can throw things back there if you have something a little taller or a little longer it can stick out the tonneau cover works really well you just roll it up and you've got it there all the time. The only downside though is it doesn't lock. There's like a little clip so it stays secure. You don't have to worry about it flying off, but you can just pop that open even if the trunk and everything is locked. So if you've put some valuable things back there, you lock your Gladiator, you walk away, that tonneau cover is technically accessible all the time without any way to stop people from getting into it. So that's one little thing. It's a little disappointing. I mean, I haven't put anything in the back of this yet, at least nothing important, just camera equipment and things like that. And then I'm not leaving it anywhere. But just something to note, aside from that though, it's really cool, works out really well. And again, if you're looking for a mid-sized truck like this, I gotta say the cool factor is really what's pushing this thing forward, but it's not just the cool factor. I mean, it's everything else that works so well. The Pentastar V6, there's enough power to get things going. I've had zero issue getting up onto the highway. You've got enough torque to be able to tow, as I said, up to 6,000 pounds. And again, that's more than enough for somebody who's doing something on the weekend with some little toys. You know, you've got like a snow do, ski do, things like that. You wanna be able to put it on a trailer, take it on the back, no problems whatsoever. Again, just check what you're towing and everything based on the configuration of the truck that you're going with. Something that we always mention when we're doing the truck stuff. But for a truck, this works incredibly well. I'm really, really happy with it. I've enjoyed it. I mean, I'm not saying I wasn't planning on enjoying it. I mean, I had it booked months ago for that specific reason because I was so excited about it. And again, seems to continuously come up in conversation now, but unlike the Arteon, which I was thoroughly disappointed with because I was so excited about it, this has met my expectations and even exceeded them a little bit. I'm very impressed with it. So I was hoping it would be great I'm really loving it. And here's something I want to try. We're on, it's, it's snow. Like, let's be honest. Let's stomp on the brakes. Oh, man. I mean, we're staying straight, but boy, oh, boy. Oh, man, I hate this weather. I hate the fact that they don't plow in this province. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. So, like, here we are. Snow town. Wow, that's pretty cool. Boom, ABS kicking in for the win. There's a lot of good going on with the 2020 Jeep Gladiator Overland. Now, it's no surprise to me why it's won this past year for Truck of the Year from so many different publications, and it would have made our list for our Year in Review Awards also, but you'll have to wait a full year to see how it does for 2020. Let's go over the fuel economy, though. We averaged 10.9 liters per 100 kilometers or 21.6 US miles per gallon during our 100 kilometer test loop in too high. We finished off our 825 kilometer snowy week at 14.6 liters per 100 kilometers or 16.1 MPG, mostly keeping the Gladiator in 4 high mode. This wasn't what we did last year with the Wrangler, but we shouldn't expect a pickup truck to do as well as its SUV brother. 
Let's talk likes and dislikes though. The ownership experience of the Gladiator is great. Like the Wrangler, you'll be waving to other Gladiator and Wrangler owners as you pass by, giving you automatic membership to this unique automotive community. The overall design of the Gladiator is also a solid win for us. Even though it's exactly what a Wrangler pickup truck would look like, it's still one hell of a cool vehicle. The functionality of that bed is also a like, as you have usable length and depth if you plan on using this as a truck. We found that the power delivery of the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 to be plenty, with a nice grunt coming from the engine and exhaust under wide open throttle. Paired with either a 6 speed manual or this 8 speed automatic, buyers get some choice for their Gladiator. And finally, we still have to give credit to FCA for their infotainment system. Once the bane of our driving experience, Uconnect 4 is the, one of the best consumer grade systems on the market. Now there's not much to dislike about the Gladiator. This isn't the pickup truck for everybody, much like the Wrangler isn't the SUV for the masses either. We experienced similar heating and airflow issues that we've had with other Jeep models previously. Automatic mode didn't work very well, and we had to continuously adjust the temperature setting for both zones. Also the roll-up tonneau cover's lack of security was a miss for us, but can be easily resolved by going with one of the other covers offered or finding a third party alternative. But aside from that, we really have nothing negative to say about the Gladiator. It met and exceeded our expectations and is easily the coolest mid-sized pickup truck on the planet. It's unfortunate that Jeep doesn't offer the Wrangler's Bikini Pearl paint option on this as it's the color that we'd go with for ours. At $63,000 Canadian, the Gladiator offers a lot, but to do it test drive style, we'd go with the Hydro Blue Pearl Paint, Dark Saddle Leather Interior, skip the Ox Switch Group Trailer Tow Package, the Trail Rail Cargo Management System, and Side Steps, but add the Advanced Safety Group Package to the LED Lighting, Safety, and Cold Weather Groups, and throw in the Body Colored Freedom Top. You end up saving about $2,230 and still have the coolest truck on earth test drive style.